Hi. Hi, Dr. Wilson. Welcome to the Hoover House. Come on in. Wow, thank you for inviting us in. It's wonderful to have you here. This house is beautiful. How are you feeling today, Dr. Wilson? I'm doing just great, thank you. <laughs> That's great. Are you ready for 73 questions? I am ready. All right, to start off, can you tell us a little bit about where we're at right now? This is the Hoover House. It's the residence of the president of the University of Texas at El Paso. Can you give us a little bit more about the history of Hoover House? Yeah, the Hoover House was finished in 1917, so it's a, it's a very old home, and it was one of the first homes here in the, in the, uh, in the current neighborhood. Cool. Uh, actually, do you know who that is? Yeah, that is, uh, that's Mr. Dudley. He was, he was a state legislator who, um, who carried the bill to uh, rebuild the, then the Texas College of Mines. So the first building for Texas College of Mines was built out in East El Paso, where Fort Bliss is now, and it burned down. And the people of El Paso insisted they wanted to rebuild the school, um, and they committed to donate the land, and the legislature appropriated $100,000 to rebuild those buildings. And he carried the bill for it, and they, the land was donated here at the foot of the Franklins. Uh, he was also uh, the person who commissioned this house. So he commissioned the architect and built this house. And when it was finished in 1917, he moved in. And at the time, he was the mayor of El Paso. Wow. Is there anything else interesting that you know about Hoover House? Actually, there is. Um, the, the dining room has, uh, is, has all of the furniture that the Hoovers had here. And it was Lou Ann Hoover who told me that. She is one of the surviving daughters. She's in her 90s now. And when she came to have tea at this table just after I arrived here, she said, oh, this is the same furniture. This was the furniture that was here when she was a child. And she used to play in the mirror underneath the bar here. And the, the cupboards there open uh, on, a, on a rotate, they're like rotating cupboard doors, which you could imagine that children loved. And she, she remembered those doors and playing in the mirror here. So this, this furniture was all uh, belonging to the Hoovers. Well, do you have a specific item that's maybe your favorite? Well, I do. Um, uh, I have a lot of our family pictures downstairs, of course, um, because, you know, this, it, the, the downstairs of the Hoover House we use for public events for the university, or as my husband says, we live upstairs from the museum. Um, and, but we also kind of wanted to make it our own, and, uh, and we are now grandparents. And like all grandparents, we, um, we like to torture people with the pictures of our grand grandchildren. And so, so we put pictures of our family around and things. And this is, uh, this is my, my granddaughter Miriam and her dad, my son-in-law. And I look at that and think, okay, this baby has her daddy's eyes. I just love that picture. And then I love this one. This is my daughter and my granddaughter. Um, just, uh, she's, a, she's a joyful little girl. And so we have pictures of family around, and I just love that. Well, it, we see that you've brought in family pictures to make it your own. Is there anything else that you've brought in that to make Hoover House your own? Sure. I mean, uh, one of the things is actually in the living room. Um, my, my father and my grandfather were aviators, and uh, my dad built uh, an experimental open cockpit biplane inside our house. And so um, for over 40 years, there was, a, there was a propeller that he didn't put on his airplane. He put on a fancier propeller. So he had an extra propeller. And, um, and I always have to say, the propeller belongs to my brother. He can have it back whenever he wants. He's just loaned it to me for about 40 years. And so, so I have my dad's propeller in the living room. Well, it does sound pretty quiet in here. Do you have any secret pets maybe hiding upstairs? Secret pets. She's not very secret. It's Miss Money Penny is, um, or we call her Penny. She's, uh, she's the family dog. And um, she's getting old now. She's like 14, but she just loves it when people come to visit. So she is, she's a people dog. And, um, and so she's a perfect campus dog because about a ratio of about 25 students to one dog is about right. She can't be too annoying to any single person. Well, as we mentioned earlier, Hoover House has a bunch of history, but one thing I don't see is a TV. Do you watch TV? No, I don't watch TV. My, my husband has a, a screen that's hooked up to Netflix or something, but I, uh, there's, no, there's no TV in the Hoover House. 
Well, if you could, what would movie night look like for the Wilson family here? Oh, we'd probably be watching some old flick, you know, we'd be, <laughs> we're not, <laughs> we're kind of boring actually. Um, although I just watched a film uh, coming back from travel, uh, and it's, it's a new film that's out, it's called Dog, and it's about a veteran who's bringing uh, his buddy's dog to his buddy's funeral. I thought it was a really touching film. I thought it was wonderful. Did you hear that? Uh, have you heard of any spooky stories here at Uber House? Well, I don't think there are any ghosts here. At least I haven't experienced them, but, um, but there are a few secrets here. Do you think you could maybe share them, maybe specifically a trap door? There is. So when we moved in, we were told that there was a trap door underneath the dining table and the dining table is really heavy. Um, uh, but but one day when they, the, they were fixing something on the dining table, they had moved it. And that night, my husband and I rolled back the carpet. And sure enough, there is a trap door underneath the dining table. And if you go down in the cellar, uh, there was a wall there. So it looks like, you know, that's the, the edge of the cellar goes over here. But there was a secret room under the dining, under the dining room. And it's uh, apparently where they put the liquor during Prohibition. Um, do you know any UTEP stories, maybe? UTEP stories? Or like ghost stories. Sorry. Ghost stories. I do know some ghost stories. <laughs> Can you tell us maybe one, if you don't mind sharing? Well, I've heard a couple, but I understand there may be a ghost in the DeWetter Center who walks around late at night and causes printers to go on and some other things. And I've also heard that there may be a ghost in Kelly Hall. Well... We're a quarter of the way done, Dr. Wilson. Are you ready for a firing round, maybe? Ready. Can I, can I sit down for this one? Go for it. Okay, I'm ready. Ready? Dogs or cats? Dogs. Favorite fast food? Uh, green chili. Ever been to Chico's Tacos? No. Whataburger or In-N-Out? Ah, uh, Whataburger. <laughs> Favorite thing to do in El Paso? Um, I like to go walking. Do you have a favorite El Paso view, maybe? I like uh, up from uh, uh, up at Scenic Drive, looking out when they close it on Sunday. It's just gorgeous. Do you speak any other languages? Um, peu de français, and my mother made me take Latin in high school, which was completely useless. Do you have a specific book you're reading right now? I just finished uh, Clifton Strengths Finders this morning, actually, and um, and I just finished the freshman reading that uh, that the freshmen in Unit Unit thirteen oh one are gonna do this semester as well. I wanted to read it. Do you have a favorite music genre? Country. Favorite musician? Oh, maybe Garth Brooks. Favorite holiday? Memorial Day. When's your birthday? December 30th. Pancakes or waffles? Pancakes. Sunrises or sunsets? Mm, sunrises. All right, that finishes up our firing round. Good job. <laughs> I survived. I know, that was a little bit tiring. I honestly couldn't go for a glass of water. How about you? Absolutely. I love your kitchen. It's so nice. I live a blessed life. All right. How many pictures of UTIP do you have? Do you know? How many pictures, like on my phone? Yeah. A lot. <laughs> <laughs> Um, if you could teach one subject at UTEP, do you know what it would be? Well, there's probably a lot I'm not even close to qualified to teaching, um, but I'd probably teach the freshman introduction to the university class or I'd te teach American government. So how's the UTEP presidency so far? I think it's doing okay, although the global pandemic thing was not, so, that was not in my plan. <laughs> I don't think it was in anyone's plan. <laughs> but do you remember where you were at when you were first appointed? Yes, I do actually. Where was that? I, I was at my office at the time. I was the secretary of the Air Force, so I was at my office in the Pentagon. How'd you celebrate? Well, I didn't really celebrate. I had to, to uh, uh, it, it wasn't public until the regents announcement announced it. So no one in the Pentagon and the president wasn't aware. So I had to get arranged to get a letter to the president and inform people uh, of the decision. And so it was kind of a busy morning. 
Well, former president Natalicio left very big shoes to fill. Did she give you any advice, maybe? Well, she did. I, uh, one of them that we would uh, laugh about a little bit is her feet are actually a lot tinier than mine. So the shoe thing doesn't really work with her and I. <laughs> she a very, was a very petite woman. Um, but I think she did a wonderful job and was very caring towards the community and the students that we serve. And I think that's a, uh, that's a great role model for any president. Well, what does a day look like for the Utah president? It changes a lot. So it's a, it's a job where you have to be the outward facing um, leader of the, to the community. You also have to administer internally a huge university and everything from you know, construction plans to classrooms and, uh, and schedules and hiring and all of those things. You have, to, you have to fundraise and you have to steward research. So there's a lot of different pieces that you have to do. Um, so every day is different. It's kind of a 24 seven job, which I kind of like. And then stuff changes. Like last night, my, my connection got missed in Dallas and I spent the night in Dallas and get back here this morning. And so you just, you have to be adaptable. That sounds like a lot. Remind me not to be a college president one day. <laughs> it's actually fun. <laughs> well, to relax, do you take walks on campus maybe? I like to walk uh, both on campus, but also up here in the current neighborhood. It's a beautiful neighborhood to walk in and, and, uh, and I, I like to walk. What are your go-to walking shoes? Do you have a specific pair maybe? Well, I don't have walking shoes, but I've got my special UTEP boots that my, uh, this was a gift from my husband the first Christmas we were here. And I wear them, I, I usually wear them to, to basketball games because um, I don't have to walk far in the basketball games. So. Speaking of sports, have you ever gone to any of those big memorial, memorable UTEP games? Well, I think a lot of UTEP games are memorable. I, I think last year's game against New Mexico State uh, was a really fun game. Of course, it was at New Mexico State, but we won. The team was really psyched, and it was just a fun game. Do you have a piece of any of those amazing games, basketball, football, even a cool t-shirt maybe? I've got a lot of t-shirts, but I also, the basketball teams this fall gave me, but the men's team and the women's team gave me basketballs and signed them. And I thought, that's really cool. That was really nice of them. To you, what's UTEP most famous for? Um, well, I think probably to, uh, to the people in community, it's really famous for being a great school that's accessible, you know? But I think to the wider country, the thing that most people talk to me about when I, when I say, yeah, I'm the president of UTEP, they say, 1966, Glory Road. They know us because UTEP was the school that changed college athletics and opened opportunity. And I think that that's a great thing to be known for. What's one thing you would want everyone to know about UTEP? Um, it's, a, it's a great school that, that families can afford. And I think that, um, that uh, you know, sometimes we don't talk enough about the things that we do exceptionally well. And I think it's, uh, you know, we're a little bit of a hidden gem. UTEP has amazing architecture. Do you mind telling us a little bit about it? So the uh, dean, the wife of the first dean of the school, when they rebuilt the campus here, so back in 1914 you know, to 1918, um, uh, they said, all right, we've got money from the legislature. We're going to rebuild the campus. What's it going to look like? And she had just read the National Geographic magazine in April 1914 that had the first pictures of the kingdom of Bhutan. And they're black and white pictures. And she said, well, that looks a little bit like the Franklin Mountains. Why don't we make it like this? And so the first building, Old Main, was built in that Bhutanese design. And every building since then, pretty much, has used the same architectural design, even our, even our, our parking garages. So it is, the, it, it is Bhutanese, uh, Bhutanese design, and it makes it a really unusual and unique campus. Oh my gosh, does that mean maybe Boone's royalty have ever visited campus? The, uh, I don't know, royalty hasn't visited while I'm, I've been here, but there is a connection between the Kingdom of Bhutan and UTEP that started with architecture, but also now extends to students. We have, we have over 40 students from Bhutan here at UTEP, which the, the population of the country is only about 800,000. So that's significant number of alumni in Bhutan and students here. And the, uh, the ambassador to the UN from Bhutan came here uh, for Dr. Natalicio's funeral. And so she came and, and we talked and had tea here and, uh, and the, the connection continues to be close. Speaking of students, do you know how many students are enrolled for this fall semester? Um, a, a little over 24,000 total. 
Oh, wow. Well, secondly, how important is it to you that students get involved on campus? Really important. So, you know, part of college is what you do in your classroom and getting through the books and passing your classes and getting ready for a, for a professional life, whatever, whatever your dream is. But another part of college is to develop your gifts in ways that are outside the curriculum. And, and the, way, the best way to do that is to get engaged in things, whether it's student government or athletics or clubs or fraternities or internships and co-ops or on-campus research. All of those things help young people to become better versions of themselves and prepare them for the next chapter of their lives. So it's really, really important. Well, I have a question for you. There's a big fan on UTEP at UTEP who's a big fan of yours. They go by UTEP Affirmations. Do you know about them? Uh, no, I don't. Well, would you ever give them a follow maybe? I don't know. I'd be I'm a little careful about who I follow, but I'd, I'll check it out. No worries. Don't worry about it. <laughs> Any recent discoveries on campus? Uh, scientific discoveries are happening all the time, and, uh, and I, uh, uh, I am just amazed at the quality of the faculty working with students and the discoveries that are made here. We probably have anywhere between 20 and 50 patents every year. It's remarkable in everything from, from, uh, from healthcare to medical devices to advanced manufacturing and aerospace. It's a, it's a very creative place. Last fall, students returned on campus. How exciting was that for you? I thought it was great. <laughs> and uh, I thought that the, the, uh, the thing is, we, we decided we, you know, we believe in an engaged and in-person education. And, and we think that it's important. Um, we also knew that our students had lost a lot um, during the pandemic and, and needed to be back together and engaged. And so we really increased significantly the numbers of things we were doing on campus. So it's not a question of, is there something going on on campus today? It's what am I going to choose of all the things that are going on on campus today? Well, you did hold the first ever Texas Gold Rush. Is, yeah. is there any plans for that this year, maybe? I think we're going to do it again. That turned out to be pretty popular. And I don't know whether we're going to have all the fireworks again, because but I really like the fireworks. It was planned by the students. I thought it was a great way to welcome students back to campus in the fall. Well, you were a first generation student. Um, how was that for you? Well, I was the first in my family to go to college. And I, at the time, I just knew I was gonna go to college. I didn't know where or how really, um, but it opened doors of opportunity for me that I didn't even know were there. And uh, my life was changed because of it. And, uh, and um, I'm glad that it happened to me. And I'm also really glad that UTEP provides that opportunity for so many others. Who were your inspirations to go to college? Um, I, as I said, I didn't have anyone in my family who had gone to college before. My grandparents were very important in my life. They were immigrants to America. And um, my grandmother was a seamstress and she got a job at a shoe factory here. And my grandfather was, a, was, a, was an airman, he was a pilot. Um, and he, uh, he ran a little airport and was a mechanic and other things. So they were important to me. But I think it was probably teachers in high school who guided me towards uh, college education. And I just, I just knew that I was going, and I'm not really sure where that idea came from. Do you have any advice to first-generation students? First, work hard, because college does happen fast. The courses are, you know, what you do in high school in AP calculus or something would happen in a semester rather than a year. So work really hard. Take responsibility for your own education. So, so, so you know, in high school, sometimes they give you your schedule and you just kind of do what you're told to do. Once you're in college, you have, to, you have to own your own life, own your own education and seek things out that will develop you or that interest you. So, so act. Um, and, um, and reach out and find help. Uh, if there's lots of help at UTEP. If you're struggling with math, we have a math center and math tutors. If you need more practice in writing, we have that. And one of the best things is, if you're struggling sometimes with those things, one of the best ways is to get involved as a tutor. One of the best ways to teach, I mean, whether one of the best ways to learn is to help others and engage with other groups of students to help everybody succeed. So, so hard work is part of what college is about, but, but uh, everybody can succeed if they apply themselves at UTEP. You mentioned earlier that you come from a family of pilots. Do you ever fly on your free time maybe? I do. I have a little airplane out at the Santa Teresa airport. And um, depending on the weather, first thing in the morning, I might be up flying. Where's your favorite place to fly to? I like to fly west of, uh, west of 
of El Paso out over the, the Badlands and you go out towards Deming a little bit and it's just beautiful. And then I fly up the Rio Grande. Uh, if you fly up the Rio Grande over Las Cruces and around towards Hatch, it's just, there's a lot of pecan orchards and you see things from, you know, you see the world differently from 3,000 feet. Do you have a favorite ar aircraft? I, my own aircraft is probably my favorite, if you mean just generally. I do like the SR-71, which is the Blackbird, but my own aircraft is just a little Cessna 152. All right, well, we're reaching the end of our interview, Dr. Wilson. I have three more questions for you. Sure. All right. What advice do you have for students of UTEP? Work hard, take advantage of all the opportunities that are here, and build relationships of trust and friendship with others and that'll serve you well for the long term. What does the future hold for you, Tip? Oh gosh, um, I, think, I think the sky's the limit. You know, We have 24,000 students here now. I wanna see more students from this region take advantage of a college education. Um, but I also, I also think that more people are realizing the research strength of UTEP as well, and we're advancing discovery of public value and positively impacting this community in all kinds of ways, healthcare, schools, um, economic development. So I just think it's a great time to be here. All right, if you could describe UTEP in one word, what would it be? Hmm, fantastic. Okay, Dr. Wilson, that concludes our 73 questions. Okay, go Miners. Thanks so much for coming. Thank you.